let's have a look. Uh, can we see who's in here? Technology. <laughs> okay. I can't see anyone who's in here, but okay, you've got so you've got lots of people joining now, Penny and uh, Matthew. Uh, you've got. 16 attendees so far. Good. Okay. So talk amongst yourselves. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Just waiting for a few more people to join and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get going. Um, anyone who's bought uh, the cheese coffers for the tasting, make sure please that they're out of the fridge. Um, hopefully you remember to do that uh, a couple of hours ago, uh, get them up to room temperature. Uh, if you want to have something to drink with um, while you're tasting, we are drinking uh, Hop Drop Ale, which is um, from Stroud Brewery, organic. Uh, it's what we wash the cheese, some of our cheeses in. We think it's really good. Um, but otherwise, cider, white wine, sweet white wine is good with these cheeses. Um, but whatever you fancy. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful day out there, but it's quite nice to be inside, actually. It's been quite blurry, hasn't it? Right. Should we? Are we ready to go? Yes, go, go, go. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Penny, this is Marcus. We are the husband and wife team uh, from Felton's Farm. Uh, we are an organic small holding in the heart of the Blackmore Vale in Somerset. Uh, we've been making cheese for about four years and we're here for this half hour session to talk to you about cheese branding. Um, we will start, so we'll talk, um, uh, so we'll give you about 15 minutes now uh, with an introduction, a film from our um, fantastic friend and designer Jem Panufnik. Uh, and then we will go into a live cheese tasting with Marcus and our other cheesemaker Tom. And then finally, for those of you who've been waiting, because I know there are quite a few, we will be putting all your names into um, the cheese hat. In fact, this is a mould. This is one of the moulds that we make our cheeses with. Um, and that we'll be choosing a lucky winner for one of our Fresca Margarita t-shirts. So there's still time if you haven't registered for the t-shirt, uh, just email uh, La Fresca to penny at feltonsfarm.com. Um, so you've got another sort of 15 minutes or so to get your, your, um, your name in for that. So, um, where do we start? I guess we start with how, how we started making cheese and, and, the, and the branding process. Um, so Marcus, tell us a bit about uh, um, So. We're not traditional cheesemakers. Um, we sort of fell into it. I got uh, made redundant in London uh, and I went and did a fantastic one day course at River Cottage back in 2016, uh, a course done by uh, Paul Thomas, who's also doing a session uh, over this weekend. Um, and I was hooked. I was hooked on the, on the combination of, of science and art and, and uh, came back home, started experimenting uh, in our kitchen um, and quite soon had, had the prototype um, for what would become Renegade Monk. Um, and knew that I was going to start building a, uh, a cheese dairy uh, and we needed a name at that point. Um, and so quite often cheeses are named after the local village. Um, the local village here is, is Horsington, which didn't sound very appetizing as a cheese. So we decided we wanted something a bit different. Um, Penny, over to you. So we pulled in, we're all about friends and, and kind of working with them because we, we, we love our friends. Um, so we pulled in a, a dear old friend of ours called Rosie Walford, who um, has come, has worked for all of those big advertising um, agencies, J. Walter Thompson, that kind of thing. And she is the most fantastic creative inspiration for products and helping you kind of decide who you are, what, your, what she calls it, what's your, what is your brand essence. So we knew already because we have come from, because of who we are, that we are very much about organic, uh, sustainability. You know, we run our farm here on 40 kilowatts of, um, uh, of solar panels and it's all ground source heat pumps. Um, but more than that, we also, we knew that kind of this cheese that Marcus had, had made and had, had created was inspired by the travels that we've been on because we, you know, we've been to most places. <laughs> um, <laughs> We, and in fact, it's, in fact, it's that there are uh, holidays in the south of France, it's, it's in a poisse, uh, but just made here in the heart of uh, the Black Vale uh, from the brilliant milk that we, that is produced here. Um, with, a, with a few differences. Uh, there are a few differences. So what Rosie did was she sat us down, she, um, 
over it, she unfortunately she lives in New Zealand, so it was over several sessions on Skype about four years ago, and said, right, she asked us questions. So if you were, you know, t t talk us through if you, you know, what's the human motivation? What is the what are the powerful um, things about what you do? What do you respond to? If you if we do something better or differently from the rest, what is it that we do that's better and different from the rest? Um, so, for example, we knew that this, you know, we hadn't made a cheddar because there are so many fantastic cheddar makers, particularly in our local area. But this is, this was a soft, um, a soft rind washed cheese with a difference. It had a twist that Marcus had added, it had a blue in it. Um, so what, what, why was that different? What, what did that bring? Um, she asked us about the kind of source of authority, um, the personality, the tone and the style. And what came out of, I can show you something like that, if you would like, we can send you um, what we basically used. Um, but she, what came out of it was that we, um, we, we are adventurous. We like, you know, we want our cheese board to be a kind of an adventure for our taste buds and for, and also to kind of create a, a, a source of conversation for the people that we're, that, that we're eating. It. Food for us is, a, is not just about community, it's almost, a, it's a communion. We eat with people. Um, I know it's been harder than the past year, but that's, that is, that is what it's about basically. Um, also that we kind of, it's what we were doing is slightly, is so different and slightly rebellious, kind of kicking against the trend. Um, and that we had, you know, it was very much about that kind of a, a slightly dramatic edge to, you know, how we, how we present something, how we do something. So having come up with this, uh, which is a sort of brand essence statement, uh, Rosie then gave us some homework, which was to come up with a long list of, of nouns and adjectives that seemed to reflect elements of the of our brand essence. And we took all of those nouns and adjectives and put them together in, in different pairings. Uh, and eventually we came up with this, this pairing of renegade monk and it instantly seemed to resonate with us. Um, and it made sense for who we were, who the cheese was. Um, so to break it down, it was a bit renegade because the cheese is a hybrid, as Penny said, it's a it's a blue washed rind, which is something people don't normally do. Uh, monk, because washing cheeses and alcohol is an old European monastic technique. Uh, and then finally, Felton's Farm uh, sits on land that used to be owned in the, in the 12th century, 13th century, uh, by the Knights Templar. And the Knights Templar uh, are obviously the original renegade monks. So that just felt like a, a really strong uh, name to us. It, it it's, it's, was uh, sort of provocative, quite cheeky. Um, so we have the name. And then what we needed, of course, was the branding, the label. So Penny. So what we so what we did is we then took um, the brand essence that we had and the name, and we sent those to another dear friend of ours, uh, Jem Panufnik, who has got. He's a wonderful musician, artist, uh, designer, and he. We knew that the way we knew his work anyway, um, and he just he responded to it really well. Um, so we're going to show you a short film that he's made for us because unfortunately he can't, he's had COVID so he can't be with us at the moment. Uh, but just a short film about how he went through that design process, um, uh, not just for Renegade Monk, but for our subsequent cheeses because we make two others, Rebel Nun and La Fresca Margarita. So um, let me just find that video and share it with you. Hello, my name is Jem Panufnik. I'm the designer for Felton's Farm and Renegade Monk and other products. Uh, and it's my first ever bit of... Oops, can everyone see that? Can everyone see that? They, they can't answer that. Oh, okay. Just play it. Packaging, I've... Uh, done a bit of labelling and branding for a brewery called Powder Keg in Devon, um, and but this is my first ever actual food packaging. Uh, my background really uh, visually is mainly in music, and I my, done, used to do record sleeves and that kind of thing back in the days of vinyl, uh, and then everything went digital and small. Uh, but uh, this is a great thrill to start doing stuff that's sort of printed and bring back that excitement of getting stuff back from the printers again. So um, Rosie Walford and 
uh, Penny and Marcus had already met up and had wonderful creative discussions about the character and attitude of the farm and product and came back to me with some very exciting words like renegade and buccaneers, rebellious and um, adventurous and um, cheese board drama, things like that, which, which helped a lot in conjuring up a sort of image in my head of a sort of um, rebellious nature and something a bit sort of different, a bit out of the box. Um, so we discussed um, the style. Um, so I was doing lots of montage and collage at the time and it seemed to fit perfectly. It was actually at, um, traditional cheese labels. Um, here's a wonderful book on uh, old Camembert cheese labels that was recommended to me by Professor Alan Brooks, the renowned collector and author of uh, cheese labels, who's now become a good friend. And um, there were some wonderful images, the kind of thing that we were looking at, where they sort of follow a sort of pattern, highly illustrative, a uh, wonderful hand done, where the colour separations would have been done by hand, um, and uh, you know, using stone litho and um, there was a sort of very traditional uh, feel, very artisan feel, which we wanted to kind of carry forward, but give it a nice crisp, slightly sort of modern take. So beer and monks straight away, bring them together, uh, conjures up all sorts of hilarious imagery. Uh, first thing I started doing was sort of rebellious sort of monks on motorbikes from Holly Davidson's and um, swilling enormous tankards of beer and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, it was a bit too naughty and a bit specific. Uh, and really, um, the next stage was I started collecting, I've got a big collection of engravings of not just characters and landscapes, but also old Victoriana and product photos and things like that and machines and things. So I started doing a sort of collage and a sort of montage of um, this interesting monk character and as a sort of steampunk time trap, just giving it a sort of timeless quality um, and his sort of mad crazy mission to, to, to spread the word um, uh, and give it you know, a sort of steampunky kind of vibe. So um, that's how it developed into that. And the other sort of urgent thing at that stage was to come up with a sort of formula, sort of house livery as, as so that would transcend across to other products and so it could be instantly recognisable. Time we've done that, it was very quick to then be able to come on to the sister act, pun intended, of uh, Rebel Nun. Uh, and uh, I could just give her her own sort of colour scheme and vibe. Uh, and then, equally, when we came to doing the Fresca Margarita, which is the young, sort of more frisky, fresher um, cheese, uh, and uh, Margarita being Spanish for Daisy. But uh, they all have this sort of humour, this sort of Monty Python-esque, Terry Gillingham kind of vibe, which is just fun and slightly different. And it just means you can take liberties with these classical images and, and put your own sort of character on them. So that is the angle for, for these. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to what the next product might be. Right, so um, I think we're there. Um, can everyone, uh, I just need to check in that everyone, can anyone see? So let's have a look at that chat, cheese board, drama, right, so people could hear. Um, let's see, can everyone hear and see us now? Yes, we're all good. Great, um, so we can take um, uh, some questions whilst we're going and I'll sit to the side and try and interpret. I'm just gonna introduce for a second this is Tom, our cheese maker, Hello. Marcus, and they're going to take you through some of that cheese board drama now. Um, just before we start, uh, do have a look at Jem's website, which is jempanupnikart.com. He's a fabulous uh, designer and various, various pieces there uh, for sale, which look great on any wall. Um, so cheese, let's get on with the cheese tasting. Um, what we're going to do is, is, is work through uh, the three cheeses that we currently make, so the Fresca, Rebel Nun, and Renegade Monk. Uh, normally, the, the best way of doing this is to start with the mildest and, and work your way up. Um, we're going to do it using uh, the Academy of Cheese's fantastic 
uh, structured approach to tasting cheeses. Uh, you can download this from their website, um, and there are sort of note sheets which you can print off. Um, and we'd recommend anyone taking the uh, interested to take the level one course, uh, which will really teach you how to taste uh, cheeses professionally. Um, so if we open up the La Fresca Margarita, um, so this is our newest cheese. It's a uh, queso fresco, uh, which is a South American cheese. They use it typically to, uh, to cook with a lot on tacos, on quesadillas, but it's delightful by itself. We made two different versions. This is the salted version. Um, fantastic if you add herbs to it or chili flakes. Uh, the unsalted, perfect for cooking, but also if you add honey to it and have it for breakfast. It's a, it's a really versatile cheese. It doesn't quite melt. Um, I've been putting it into some soups, but it gives a lovely sort of velvety texture to it. Um, so when you first open a cheese, um, you know, again, the, the tasting sheets will take you through this, but you, you need to look at it. You need to sort of assess it before you taste it. It's very easy just to start gobbling it down. Um, and, it, you know, if you're being proper about this, you'll make notes as you go along as to what the cheese is. I can tell you, obviously, it's, it's cow's milk, it's, it's pasteurized. Uh, we use an animal rennet with the, uh, the La Fresca. Uh, there's obviously no rind on there. Um, it, is, it is a fresh cheese. It only takes four days uh, to make. Um, and then, Tom, you've got a knife there, so we'll, we'll keep separate, COVID safe. We're all in the same bubble. Um, and so you start looking at the, the, the texture. So those of you who have got one of these at home, you know, sort of dig into it, cut some out, um, and you'll see it's, it's, it's very soft. It's not like a runny cheese. It's more sort of mousse-like. Um, but it's very delicate. Um, the colour, I'd have said, is sort of somewhere between white and ivory. Um, no bluing, obviously. Um, and they do actually encourage you, the uh, Academy of Cheese, to, if you can, actually feel it. You know, so, so really work out what's, what's going on with the cheese. Um, and you sort of press it between your fingers and you see it's not, it's not runny, but it does have this sort of mousse-like consistency. And then start smelling it. And it's... It's not a strong cheese, this, but, but you, there is a, an intensity of smell, which is, 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 is this sort of freshness. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say you're getting there, Tom? Sort of, almost like a, a milky, bright acidity, actually. Mm -hmm. Something that you expect from something that kind of age. Um, but yeah, it just overwhelmingly freshness, really. Um, so no ammonia smell on there at all. Um, it's not an overly complex cheese, which you wouldn't expect with, a, with such a young cheese. Um, and you can keep them for up to, to three weeks, four weeks. Um, personally, I think they're best eat them really fresh. Uh, as they age, they tend to dry a little bit. The texture becomes a little bit more like a cream cheese, so, you know, like Philadelphia. Other brands are available. Um, so it's, it's sweet. There's a little bit of saltiness in there, obviously, because it's the salty one. Um, Savoury, not so much. Bitter, not at all. Um, but there is this acidity, a sort of citrusy acidity to it. Um, very good by itself, very good on crackers. Peter Tiara has been very kind to send us a whole range of crackers. We love the Peter Tiara biscuits. Um, for this cheese, I would probably go for, for a plain cracker. I don't want to, 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 to drown it out. Um, and Opie's have also sent us, uh, Trackermans have sent us uh, various things here. So quince fruit cheese, that would work very well with this. As I said, this goes well with, with, with honey, goes well with figs. Um, that sticky fig relish, I think I might try with it. Um, I would say this, I'm, I'm a cheese maker, but I do find this particularly Moorish. <laughs> so that's the chutney. Uh, and we're drinking this, as Penny said at the beginning, with Hot Drop, which is the ale uh, that we wash both the Rebel Nun and the Renegade Monk in. So a little bit of that, that fig chutney. It does go well with these crackers. Mm. That is excellent. <laughs> Do try some of that. Bustman's <laughs> <laughs> holiday. Yeah. Okay, so that's the Fresca, and we haven't been producing it for that long. It's our lockdown cheese, and we we came up with it because, unfortunately, last year we had to throw away quite a lot of cheese, um, even though there are lots of wonderful initiatives, uh, like the British Cheese Weekend, or like the Cheese Awards, to help us spread the word. But inevitably, there were cheeses that were, didn't get out the door in time. 
the joy about the fresca margarita only takes four days to make, we can make them to order. The hard thing about it is the uh, relatively short shelf life, so we need to get them moving. Uh, but you can buy this directly from us and it's beginning to go to uh, sort of retail um, outlets around us, uh, wholesale we're, we're working on. Um, I know uh, James at number two Pound Street is, is, is keen on it, he takes it. Um, so ask around, demand it. So then we come on to the Rebel Nun. So the Rebel Nun is similar to Renegade Monk, which we'll taste at the end. Um, however, it's got uh, less of some of the cultures, uh, uh, specifically of the Geotrichum candidum, which is the thing that gives you that sort of wrinkly brain texture, and it's got more blue. Um, so what happens is if more of the blue comes through, you get less of the wash grind taste. It's still there, but it's a little bit firmer, and the, the minerality of the blue comes through quite strongly. Um, so I don't know if you can see there that you can. There is actually a little bit of bluing there on, on, on the rind. Um, they are both blue cheeses, but because of the washed rind, uh, you very rarely get blue on, on the rind and certainly never in, in the centre. Um, um, hold on, I've got a couple of questions coming in from uh, the floor. So um, Penny Barr has said that, um, would it make a good cheesecake, that fresco margarita, salted? Probably not the salted one. I'm afraid. Um, so the plain one, yes, would be fantastic in a, in a cheesecake. I think I think the salt the salt that we add to the salted version is not going to be uh, pleasant. I'm afraid. Um, just one more question. This one's from Tracy saying, "Is Hop Drop our local ale?" It is the nearest organic ale uh, to us, um, and it's surprisingly difficult to find. So we, when we started, and we didn't have organic status, uh, we bought our ale from Froome, which is only about 10, 15 miles away. Um, and when we went organic, the Salt Association insisted that we used an organic ale, even though it's such a tiny percentage of the, the overall cheese. Um, so we had went through quite a long process, actually, of tasting lots <coughs> of different ales to find one that replicated the same flavour that we were getting uh, with the, the original ale that we used. So, yes, it's, it's, it is the closest organic ale to us, but it's probably about 40 miles away. Um, we prefer it to be more local, but if you're going to be organic, you have to take the pain sometimes. Good. <clears throat> right, so the Rebel Nun, so this is, is quite a young nun. Um, it could probably do with another four or five days uh, maturing. Um, some people like them young, some people like them <clears throat> right towards the end of shelf life, which is about eight weeks from when we wrap them. Um, so if you've got one of these, um, my advice would be don't eat it all at once if you can... <laughs> control yourself uh, and, and see how it develops over, over the next week or two. Wrap it up so that it doesn't dry out uh, in the fridge and, and, and see where you get to. Um, so with the Rebel Nun and the Renegade Monk, uh, again it's cow's milk, it's pasteurised, but we use a vegetarian rennet. Um, so we'll have a look at it. Again, go back to my sheets. These are incredibly useful, these sheets. You know, I think I know what I'm talking about, but actually having this to refer to is, is, is very helpful. Uh, it's got a wash dried. It's quite pale, this one. Uh, sometimes they will go uh, more of an orangey hue. But again, the joy of artisan cheese making is this huge variety that you get. Things are never quite the same. Um, texture wise, it's fairly firm still. So as I said, this is, this is a young nun. It's it, it, going to need a little bit more time uh, to really sort of soften up. Uh, eventually, it will be soft all the way through. There's nothing wrong with eating it now. Um, but, you know, it depends how you like your cheese. Um, so it's, it's a little bit firm, it's a sort of slightly crumbly, but it's pretty even consistency all the way through. Um, it's less white, obviously, than the fresco, it's, 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 it's more yellowy, but not, not, not quite as orange as, as you'd expect, say, with the Renegade Monk. Smell-wise, quite gentle, quite gentle, mm -hmm. um, which is not going to be the case with the Renegade Monk. Um, ammonia, no, again, there's no, no ammonia coming through on this. Tom. Mm. Yeah, um, in terms of flavours, you, because they're young, you start to get a, a slight milkiness, um, sort of sweet acidity, but also a kind of bitterness, really, I think, in an, an equal between those at this age. Um, obviously, the rind having the predominant, sort of uh, stronger and heavier heavier flavours. Um, you sort of starting to get those savoury notes, I think, through um, the kind of veg, 
brassica yeah. feel. Um, so again, the, the tasting notes, the, 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 the flavour the, tree from Academy of Cheese, fantastic. Uh, yeah, the sort of um, the fermented flavours are beginning to push their way through, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it really depends on how you like it. Like Marcus said, which all the way through, you'll, you will find different flavours with it too. But, uh, but no, certainly, I'm, you're beginning to really get the essence of that rind washing. And I'm getting, so again, taking words from the sheet, I'm getting a sort of set of vegetableness, it's brassica mm. coming through there, but also the minerality, the mineral taste from the, from the <coughs> blue there. Mm. Um, so another little piece of this. Uh, and what should we try with this one? I'm going to try, I'm going to try the apricot and ginger chutney. <laughs> <laughs> because I can. <laughs> Something to drink with that? I'm, I'm enjoying myself, yeah. <laughs> Very good. I've, I've said not too much of that with this one. It's, I think, slightly overpowering. The nun. Yeah. But it does play well with the, the sweetness. Definitely. I think that would be better for my taste, I think, with a hard cheese. Mm. Very delicious. <laughs> Um, how long have we got? Another five minutes. So yep. we're, we're on, on, on track. Let's move on to the monk now. So you can see immediately there's a little bit more orange on there. Um, now, again, I said a few moments ago about the, uh, uh, the joys of artisan cheese making, that it does vary from batch to batch. Uh, there's so many different factors that will affect how the cheeses come out. Um, oh, I've got a quick question yep. from the floor saying just before you launch into that. What do you recommend wrapping the cheese in if you don't eat it all in one go? Is cling film okay or do you have something else to I, suggest? I wouldn't put cling film in direct contact with the cheese. I think it will go a tendency to go sweaty. Um, equally, you don't want the cheese to dry out, which you can do in, in, in the fridge. I would put it back in the box. Um, and then if you had some cling film across the, the, the surface of the box, maybe with a few little holes in it, but so that it's not touching the cheese. Uh, and then probably put it into the uh, the salad crisper drawer is, is going to be the best place for it. Um, so, so many variables that can affect how the uh, the cheese make comes out. Uh, one of the biggest of that is, is obviously what the cows are eating. Um, the cows have been in throughout the winter eating silage. Uh, and at the moment when we made this cheese about four weeks ago, they had just gone out uh, to the fields. Uh, now, obviously, that lovely spring grass is, is, is fantastic, but what we noticed, and we've had this for the last two years, is there is a transition period where the cows are adjusting to their new diet, and the milk changes, it gets very, very fatty, the, the timings of the cheese make uh, slightly go up in the air, so we found that the uh, coagulation times, um, so how long it took the curd to form, uh, shot down completely. Um, and so what we've ended up here is, I'm sorry that this, this has happened when we're doing this tasting, but is, is a not typical uh, renegade mug. Um, still perfectly delicious to eat, but I urge you to try it again in two weeks, three weeks time when the cow's stomachs will have settled uh, and it will back to the sort of more, more normal service will resume. Um, and let's cut into this again. So looking back at the notes, um, pasteurized vegetarian, uh, it is... A little bit softer than the uh, than the nun um, in terms of the texture. Um, you get I don't know if you can see that there's a little bit of dual texture there that they, you, you've got some uh, the softening around the rind. There's a couple of, of, of holes. Um, if you're being very strict, you'd say they were flaws. Um, there's no blue there. Um, the smell. Is significantly more intense than the, uh, the uh, Rebel Nun. You're really getting that uh, washed rind flavour there. Uh, but again, no ammonia. If you were to keep this for eight weeks, then you will get that ammonia coming through. Beginning definitely to soften up beautifully around the rind. A little bit firm in the, in the middle still. Um, Definitely a saltiness there, no bitterness, which we're getting on that young uh, uh, rebel nun. Acidity is low, the savoury is, 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 is very high. Mm. Um, and goes very well with the hot dog. <laughs> um, we've got a question from um, 
uh, the floor saying, this is from Alison Tuck, saying what, what type of cows do we have? So we do not have any cows. So we are a small holding. We've only got 22 acres. Uh, we have uh, pigs, we have sheep, uh, but you need roughly an acre per cow to, uh, for, in, in terms of uh, milk yield. And that just simply wouldn't be enough. So we buy in our, uh, our milk from local organic dairy, Bruton Organic Dairy, uh, and they have a mixed herd of Swedish red and whites, which have been bred with Holsteins. And Holsteins, fantastic milk producers, uh, but they tend to be, it's very hilly country where the dairy is, and, and they tend to fall over. Um, and so they're bred with the Swedish red and whites, which makes them stockier. A um, couple more comments. Uh, Penny Barr saying that's with superb cheese. Thank you, Penny. <laughs> um, Jan Peter Ausnes saying any particular reason for using vegetarian rennet? So I used vegetarian rennet on, on the Renegade Monk when I started, uh, partly because I, I could. I wasn't following any recipe. I was, I was, I was freestyling. Um, and we sort of did it for commercial reasons of thinking that will expand our potential audience of, you know, some people are concerned about animal rennet, um, the veganism is obviously on the rise, these are obviously not vegan cheeses, but we thought, well, why shut out a potential uh, market for ourselves? So we went with the vegetarian rennet. Um, there is an issue, there can be an issue with using vegetarian rennet, that it can make your cheese more bitter. Um, so that is something you have to, you have to watch for. Um, why did I use animal rennet with the La Fresca? because I thought I'd give it a go. <laughs> um, a couple more comments. Um, somebody saying, um, Meredith Radke saying, wow, have been waiting to try the Renegade Monk and it did not disappoint. Excellent, very pleased to hear that, thank <laughs> you. But do, do try it again in, in, in a couple of weeks, two mm. weeks, three weeks, a month's time. It will be uh, subtly different. And I think we're kind of at half an hour, uh, we're at that time, so. I think it's T-shirt time. All right, so the moment you've all been waiting for, here, in fact, we've switched because we've had so many in. Um, honestly, you've done yourselves proud, everyone. Everyone likes free T-shirts. So it's basically this T-shirt that we're drawing for, the Fresca Margarita, because that's our newest cheese. Um, so this is all of these, that come, just the entries we've had. Uh, I'm gonna, and actually, I'm going to ask Tom, because he's wearing it, to um, choose a name out of there. You might, he might not be able to read my okay. writing, so if he can't, he'll hand it to me. And the winner is uh, Camilla Kennedy. <laughs> Camilla Kennedy Harper. Harper. She may not be on because actually I've just been dealing with a few messages from people who, who couldn't get on. So um, Camilla Kennedy Harper, you've won a t-shirt. Congratulations to you. Um, you, you can, of course, this is a blatant plug, buy the t-shirts. <laughs> if you were unlucky enough not to win, you can buy them uh, from our website. And obviously, monks, nuns, and frescas are all available, as are the cheeses. Um, thank you very much for your time, everybody. Um, any other questions when we're off, do feel free to email us. Oh, yes, uh, that's info good. at feltonsfarm.com. Camilla Kennedy was on that. <laughs> she <laughs> said yes. yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> all right, have a good uh, rest of your afternoon.